I don't know how you guys feel, but it feels like the MMORPG scene has been stale. The MMO world has been stale, at least for, for quite some time now. This is all starting to change. In this video, I have six upcoming games that you will be able to play in the next few months. Cooking, swimming, chemistry, gardening, farming, hunting, building. The holy grail of all MMOs. <laughs> the MMO to rule MMOs and our forever MMO. At number six, we have Quinfall. Now, the trailer for this game caught everyone's eye when it launched around nine months ago. It had beautiful landscapes, wicked action combat, and just truly stunning spells. It is set in the medieval times, and your role is to bring peace and tranquility to a universe plunged into civil war, or become part of the growing chaos, good or evil, I guess. The game seems to want to combine loads of great elements from many of our favorite MMORPGs and combine them into one. But you will see people got a little bit skeptical. And this is because if you continue watching the trailer, you will see how many systems they're trying to bring into this game. You have things like cooking, swimming, chemistry, gardening, farming, hunting, building, all your typical kind of MMO mechanics. But wait, it gets better. They then introduce blimps, you know, like the mega balloon. Blimps, time travel, transformer-like mechs. And to, to top it all off, there's sailing with pirate ships and pirate battles. And there's even the Kraken. This is why people got a little bit skeptical about Quinfall. However, it's being developed by the Turkish studio. No, I'm going to get this wrong. Varak. <laughs> it's being developed by the Turkish studio of Varak Technology, which was only founded in 2021. Are they able to deliver this? Well, soon we'll be able to find out because on the 30th of January, they are having their very first closed beta. Next up, we have PAX Day. Now, PAX Day has captured the hearts of many of us MMO enjoyers and survival game enthusiasts around eight months ago when they released their absolutely stunning trailer, which gave us this Viking Middle Earth Fellowship feel to it. It was beautiful. Now, this social sandbox MMO is set to offer a huge map expanding over three 300 square kilometers in total there is massive dungeons the landscapes are just everything you would expect if you were in norway or switzerland and they also are offering you know your typical crafting gathering trading and soon large-scale pvp battles this is another huge project which has left many people completely skeptical given the size of the game and the systems that they want to introduce but after their first live stream held on their discord recently they announced their non-NDA alpha from the 14th to the 27th of November. A big name in the MMO RPG world now, being published by AGS globally and developed and published by NCSoft in Korea, the successor to the Lineage series, Throne and Liberty. A game that has excited many players with their promises of large siege combat, huge open world bosses, dynamic weather systems that affect the environment and your skills for example if you cast a lightning spell when it's raining it's going to do a larger aoe as well as morphs pets and a gorgeous whale that swims around the sky that allows players to jump on. After its delay in 2022, Throne and Liberty is set for release in Korea on the 7th of December, while the global release is yet to be released. However, we are expecting news soon with what we can hope to be a global release early 2024. If, however, you have an authenticated Korean account, aka you live in Korea, you will be able to play the game on the 7th because that's when it's officially launching. Up next is a bit of a favorite of mine, a game that has been born from the universe created by Frank Herbert. Some of you may even remember the original movies and the RTS game that came out in 2000s. Yes, it is June Awakening. Are you ready to survive the deadliest planet in the universe? On Arrakis, the water is life. Learn to find it and exercise water discipline by maintaining your still suit. Engage in combat in the desert while dodging the huge sandworm, all while controlling the spice. Now, if you want a little bit of information around this and what you may, may expect, there's a movie out. Go and watch the movie. It's actually pretty good. This is an open world survival MMO, which currently 
currently has no set release date, but it's extremely likely we're going to be getting a beta before the end of 2023. Up next, we have a game that has become somewhat of a meme over the past couple of years. That's right, it's the day before. <laughs> After numerous delays, countless instances of bad PR, strange marketing, and like kind of odd development practices, the day before is actually back on Steam after they won their recent court case and is set to release on the 7th of December 2023. This has made my list because regardless of the trust that has been lost between the developers and their fans, there is still thousands of people excited about the release. Now, I think you're asking why. I believe it's because the gaming world is craving for a modern daisy, you know, an, an awesome open world survival MMO. So regardless of what's happened over the past few years with Fantastic, the developer, people are extremely keen to see if they will genuinely release anything in December. And finally, number one, the holy grail of all MMOs. <laughs> the WoW Killer, the MMO to rule MMOs, and our forever MMO. A game that needs no introduction at this point, Ashes of Creation. <laughs> now this game has gotten some stick, frequently being compared very closely to Scam Citizen, aka Star Citizen. And I think this is because they are taking lots of money and it really feels like there's no release. There's no there's no end. There's no end in sight for Ashes of Creation. So this is where things kind of change for me. And this is why it's made the top of my list. They have a very transparent development process. They have a lot of fun live streams that are showing actual progress being made to the game. And people are coming around to the idea that Ashes of Creation may one day be ready to play. I kind of also feel like that we are in an era that I don't like this era, but we're in an era where games don't ever fully release. I mean, if we take a look at New World, the game released, but it might as well still be in beta. It's been developing itself for the past two years and, you know, they, they jumped in, they got their money and they're still developing it. And you see this with many, many games and you see this with the, the early access era that we're in as well, where games launch, they get the feedback from the player base and then they continue to develop the game. Game. An MMO is never fully released. Take a look at WoW. 20 years later, the game is obviously still being developed over and over and over again. Guild Wars 2 consistently being developed over and over again. New content, new patches, blah, 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 blah. As long as we get a nice core of a game with any of these games you saw today, the development process will continue and to continue and to continue until something better comes out. This is why these have made my list. With that being said, Ashes of Creation finally announced that the launch of Alpha 2 is happening in 2024. Now we don't have a date for this and it comes with a hefty price tag of around $250, but you will be able to to play Ashes of Creation in 2024, we hope. <laughs> this was my roundup of MMORPG games that you will be able to play in the coming months. We hope. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, please consider liking, please consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.